This episode is scripted by John Ruths and Newell Fisher and is narrated, recorded and edited by Newell Fisher. Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 43 in which we will be going through chapter 41, the story of Rousby Woof and the Fairy Wogdog. Chapter 41 The Story of Rousby Woof and the Fairy Wogdog If I may be permitted a little sacrilege for a moment, if you absolutely had to permanently delete a chapter from Watership Down, which one would it be? For me, personally, it would be this one. The tales of Elacre Art, while they can distract from the main action, do tend to contain important calls forward and back to the main plot. However, the only purpose this story seems to serve, in that respect, is its mention of a dog. A dog whose words will shortly be quoted by Fiverr in a very alarming way, giving Hazel the idea that saves the warren. But if a dog is going to speak in this story, the only time a dog does speak in the book, then why not just have the dog at Nuthanger Farm use words like these during the raid in Chapter 25? After all, the cat there speaks when the rabbits of Watership Down return there shortly. And then there is the last part of the title of the chapter, which makes me uncomfortable, as it contains a word that is also used as a racial slur in the UK. I feel the need to acknowledge that. John Ruth adds these thoughts, quote, It's an Ella Crera story and all, but it does not seem as mythical as the other Ella Crera stories. There is a man involved, and I think this is the main reason why. It takes place in the real world, and not in the worlds of King Darzin, Prince Rainbow, the Black Rabbit, not to mention Frith. It's a handy story, though, because it makes sense that there would be some El Herrera stories involving men, since they, we, are really the ultimate enemies of rabbits. There are some instructions in this story about how to trick men. However, it just lacks that larger feel of the other, other El Herrera stories. We're used to hearing about El Herrera defying Frith, tricking Prince Rainbow, venturing through rabbit hell, etc. Falling a man's dog just seems beneath him in a way. End quote. I agree, John. However... It's still a funny little tale, more in the spirit of Peter Rabbit than the rest of the book. It is also one of the tales that was committed to film in the 1999 TV series. Make of that what you will. The pre-chapter quote is a psalm of David, and is about delivering him from his enemies and their actions against David. At that time, King Saul, who he, whom he previously worked for, was prominent among his enemies. It's interesting that Richard Adams cho chose a psalm snippet that contains the word dog and this makes it quite fitting. And then the chapter opens with, Now came the dog days, day after day of still, hot, still summer, end quote. It's almost as if there is a theme here. Then comes a section of the main narrative that has a feeling of relief and bliss that you'd expect all Watership Down rabbits to have due to the success of the mission at Ephrafa. Indeed, if the reader were not aware of how many pages are left in the book, they could be forgiven for thinking that the story is coming to its natural end. This is not a part of the chapter I mind nearly as much. Even humble Hazel is counting the blessings of this now thriving warren. Improvements to the warren are being made, most likely by the newly arrived does who were not allowed to dig in the already well-established and over-regulated Ephrafa. Holly and Blackabar strike up a friendship. Holly, a stealthy patroller in his own right who used his talents to benefit Sandalford, is amazed at Blackabar's nearly sixth sense of observation. The warren is now 26 rabbits, made up of 16 bucks and 10 does. This is interesting, it means that 6 bucks do, did not have mates. Hazel remarks that things are going so well that he feels a perfect fraud as chief rabbit. Holly asks him about winter preparations. Hazel does, does have some ideas to better adapt the warren to the effects of winter. He remarks about hearing stories in the winter, and you, you have to guess that this is more, more common then. And this is how the story of Rousby Wolf ends up being told. The two bards of the Warren, Dandelion and Bluebell, discuss the idea of a story. At first, it seems like we'll hear a recent story of real events. Dandelion remarks that he won't yet try to tell what he calls a bigwig story, but remarks that there is another story that he's heard told many times, but has never told himself. That story is, of course, Rousby Wolf and the Fairy Wogdog. Fiverr is anxious for a story and tells Dandelion to, quote, lay it on thick, end quote. It's a good line that portrays Fiverr as just a normal rabbit and not the seer we normally think of him as. Even prophets need some R&R. &R. Dandelion starts to tell the story. 
It's another story of Ella Herrera and Rab Scuttle. It also sounds like it's a cold weather story and that food was scarce. There is a man with a garden bigger than any other around. It really sounds like a small farm since it mentions that the man cuts many vegetables and then drives them away, away in a crududu. The man had a gun and the fields were protected by a fence. The man also had a dog named Rousby Woof, who sounds possibly like a sheepdog. Dandelion describes Rousby Woof as a subservient dog to the man, who not only won't let any, any animal ever get a vegetable, but also that he'll kill any intruders that he can get to. Our two heroes venture to the garden and see the man burning a white stick, naturally, cutting cabbages while Rousby Woof jumps around in a, quote, ridiculous manner, end quote. Dogs have a special relationship with people, so you have to expect that rabbits would have a very negative view of this. Eventually, Ella Crera and Rab Scuttle try to get closer, but Rousby Wolf sees them and chases them off. Ella Crera comments that they'll just have to watch and wait for a chance to get some food. The following afternoon, Rab Scuttle notices a bag fall off a crudidu as it passes by. Hoping it would be some vegetables, he's disappointed to see that it contains meat. They bury it, even though it's not yet clear why. Then they find a discarded tyre. Rabscuttle niddle, nibbles off a bit of a, a rubber, as instructed by Ella Carrera. After Ella Carrera spends the night nibbling at it, it looks like a dog's nose. And at this point, we know that the Prince of Rabbits is clearly preparing a trick. They try to transfer as many smells into the piece of rubber as they can, including one that Hazel asks Dandelion not to mention in too much detail. They also dig up the meat that sounds like linked sausages and drag it through a part of the garden. The rabbits move to the front of the man's house. They peer at Rousby Woof and eventually Ella Crera addresses him. They are on the other side of a fence, so safe to play tricks. Ella Crera role plays the fairy wog dog. Rousby Woof is suspicious, but Ella Crera overcomes this by using some flattery. Rousby Woof smells the rubber nose and all the smells it has picked up, and this stimulates his suspension of disbelief. Apparently the rabbit somehow even managed to get a camel smell on the rubber nose. Bigwig interrupts to ask what a camel is, but Dandelion has no idea. The fairy wog dog is a messenger of Queen Drip Slobber, and it turns out that the Queen has heard of Rousby Woof. The fairy wog dog offers the sausages to Rousby Woof, who hesitates, as it would mean that he'd have to eventually leave his po essentially leave his post. However, when the fairy wog dog threatens to leave, R Rousby Woof is ready to do anything. The way that Ella Herrera talks to Rousby Wolf is comic. Quote, Listen, faithful, skilful hound, I am the fairy wog dog, messenger of the great dog spirit of the east, Queen Dripslobber. Far, far in the east her palace lies. Ah, Rousby Wolf, if only you could see her mighty state, the wonders of her kingdom, the carrion that lies far and wide upon the sands, the manure, Rousby Wolf, the open sewers. Oh, how you would jump for joy and run nosing all about. End quote. This story really is a testament to dislike of all things dog. Rousby Woof goes after the sausages that the rabbits had hidden earlier, while Ella Crera and Rabscuttle faithfully guard the garden and take nothing. He then comes back and is told to await the return of the fairy wog dog, and that this will lead to a meeting with the Queen, who is sort of like a dog Ella Crera. The next day, the rabbits bring back the rubber nose that now smells of who knows what. The fairy wog dog tells Rousby Woof of a particular crossroads. In other words, they trick Rousby Woof into leaving the house undefended again. At this point, Rousby Woof is a total believer and will do anything. The rabbits now get into the farmhouse, and where there are many vegetables ready to be transported, probably the next day. The rabbits have their fill of flayra. In the meantime, poor old Rousby Woof is waiting at the crossroads for a meeting with the Queen that will never happen. Rousby Woof hears footsteps. However, they are those of his returning master, who of course is wondering what his dog is doing here and away from his home. He surmises that his faithful hound simply left to meet him here. Man and dog get back to the house. Rousby Woof is so disappointed at having had to leave his meeting place with the Queen that he does not smell the two housebreaking rabbits. The rabbits will slip away in a small hole above the drain that they've been using for access, but the man has plugged it more securely. The man retires for the evening and leaves Rousby Woof in the kitchen rather than putting him out. Ella Ferreira and Rabscuttle are trapped. The fairy wog dog talks to Rousby Woof from behind some items. Rousby Woof is still a believer, and they talk of the failed meeting with the Queen. Ella Ferreira spins yet another yarn, this one involving a plot by the great rat spirit being aided by his rat goblins. They will attempt to slay Rousby Woof's master via a spell. The story even mentions Hamlin of Pied Piper fame. To break it, 
Rouseby Wolf must apparently run barking around the house four times. To get out, Rouseby Wolf has to raise enough of a ruckus for his master to let him out. This happens. In the ensuing chaos, Elachera and Rabscuttle naturally get away. And Rouseby Wolf spends the rest of his days convinced he did the right thing. And is, as all dogs surely aim to be, a good boy. As this episode is being recorded on the winter solstice, may I take this opportunity to wish you all the very best of whatever holidays you'll be celebrating in the coming week. Here in the UK, that tends very simply to mean a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, but as this podcast has a very international audience, I will not be so presumptuous. And this being a podcast, there is of course every chance you are listening to these words in the middle of summer, or winter in the Southern Hemisphere. But you know what I mean. May the blessings of Frith be with you and yours in this holiday season. May your flavour be perfectly ripe and your hacker perfectly smooth. Next time, a mouse brings news of new rabbits on the down. Mm-hmm.